looking for magic cards or magic carps, on the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we are revisiting Chandra Tribal, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And of course one of the main reasons to play Chandra Tribal is access to Chandra's Regulator, the two mana legendary artifact, as whenever we activate a loyalty ability of a Chandra Planeswalker, we can pay one generic mana, and if we do, we can copy that ability and choose new targets for the copy. It's a great way to get more value out of our Chandra Planeswalkers. can also pay one mana, tap it, and discard a mountain or red card from our hand to draw a card so it can help us loot away maybe additional copies of legendaries we already have in play. Then taking a look at the rest of the deck, one of the most important Chandras is Torch of Defiance. 4 mana starts out at 4 loyalty, the first plus 1 ability can provide card advantage by exiling the top card of our library, and if we don't play it we get to deal 2 damage to the opponent instead. The second plus 1 adds double red to our mana pool, perfect for ramping into the more expensive Chandras, or can simply use it to also play removal spell in the same turn, so we can protect our Torch of Defiance while increasing its loyalty to work towards the ultimate. Then the minus 3 deal 4 damage to a creature, so a great way to protect itself, and then the minus 7, which we can get to pretty quickly, generates an emblem, saying whenever we cast a spell, the emblem deals 5 damage to any target, so that can close out the game very quickly indeed, and we've got a few ways to increase Chandra's loyalty beyond just using the plus 1 ability. One of those is Karn's Bastion, which lets us proliferate, adding loyalty counters to all our planeswalkers, and we can also use Chandra Acolyte of Flame, the first zero ability puts a loyalty counter on each red planeswalker we control, including Acolyte of Flame itself, but also any other Chandras we might have in play. Then the second zero ability generates two 1-1 one, one red elemental creature tokens with haste that will get sacrificed end of turn, and the minus two lets us cast target instant or sorcery card with mana value three or less from our graveyard, and then exile it afterwards so we can replay our removal spells. And then Acolyte of Flame combines very nicely with Novice Pyromancer, as her plus 1 ability gives elementals we control plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn, so we can generate those hasty elementals and then pump them up with our Novice Pyromancer. Then the minus 1 adds double red, and the minus 2 deals 2 damage to any target, so not as powerful as Torture Defines, so just playing a single copy of Novice Pyromancer. And then at 5 mana we've got a single copy of Chandra Heart of Fire, the 5 loyalty planeswalker has a plus 1 that makes us discard our hand, and then we exile the top 3 cards of our library that we get to play until end of turn, so it can potentially provide card advantage if we're close to empty handed. Then the second plus 1 deals 2 damage to any target, and the minus 9 ultimate lets us search our graveyard and the library for any number of red instant and or sorcery cards we get to exile them, and then cast them this turn adding 6 red mana to our mana pool. And that also combines nicely with one of our new sorceries, Light Up the Night from Midnight Hunt, deals X damage to any target, and it deals X plus 1 damage instead if the target is a creature or planeswalker. So we can cast Light Up the Night for X equals 0, just to deal 1 damage to a creature, which is perfect for taking out a turn 1 Lenore Elves for instance, and then later in the game we can take out larger creatures or planeswalkers, or even target the opponent directly, so this can also be used as a finisher to close out the game. And then we can also flash back Light Up the Night for 4 mana by removing X loyalty counters from among planeswalkers we control, so also synergizes nicely with all our Chandra planeswalkers. Then, topping off our curve at 6 mana, we've got 3 copies of Chandra Awakened Inferno, which starts out at 6 loyalty, it cannot be countered, and the plus 2 gives the opponent an emblem that deals 1 damage to them at the beginning of their upkeep, so that can quickly add up if we can use it multiple times, especially with the Chandra's Regulator, giving us additional copies of that ability. Then the minus 3 deals 3 damage to each non-elemental creature, so nice sweeper, and the minus X deals X damage to target creature or planeswalker, exiling it in the process. Then looking at our non-Chandra spells, at 1 mana I'm playing the full playset of Relic of Progenitus as main deck Graveyard Hate. Despite being a little bit of a nombo with Light of the Night's flashback and maybe Acolyte of Flames minus 2, it's still a necessary evil to find graveyard strategies like Creature Reanimator decks or Mizzix's Mastery combo decks, as those are pretty tough matchups for this tap-out control style we're playing. So Relic of Progenitus gives us a fighting chance against those strategies, and against other matchups we can still just cycle the Relic of Progenitus, as it will replace itself by drawing a card. Then at 2 mana we've got a bit of acceleration with Mindstone, which can help us cast at turn 3, Chandra Torch of Defiance, which is one of our better starts, and can always sacrifice it later to draw a card as well. We've got Shadow Circle Smashing, which can be played as a land or as a removal spell, can also still discard it to our Chandra's Regulator as a red card. 
then two copies of Chandra's Triumph, dealing three damage to a creature or planeswalker at instant speed, and if we control a Chandra planeswalker we get to deal five damage instead. Two copies of Heart of Kiron, which we're planning to crew by removing a loyalty counter from a planeswalker, and then a two mana 4 4 flying vehicle with vigilance, so it can play offense and defense nicely, can just block small creatures that would otherwise be able to pressure our planeswalkers, and we could also potentially crew it with our Bone Crusher Giant, the 4 3 creature that can first use the Stomp Adventure, dealing two damage to any target, so just a great value card, and it's mostly here so I don't have to play Kahira as companion. And then three copies of Sweltering Suns as our sweeper of choice, dealing three damage to each creature, but can also be cycled for three mana in matchups where we don't need this type of effect. And then going over the mana base, we've got our two copies of Karn's Bastion, which I already alluded to, great for helping us ultimate our planeswalker faster. And then two copies of Mobilize the District, which can be a nice creature land, especially if we get multiple planeswalkers in play, reducing the activated ability, and then turns into a 3-3 creature with Vigilance. And then four copies of Interplanar Beacon, which will gain life whenever we cast a Planeswalker spell, so it can pad our life total against the more aggressive matchups, while still making red mana to cast our Planeswalkers at least. And then 15 basic mountains to complement our two copies of Shatter Skull Smashing. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand's not particularly impressive, but... We've got Relic against Graveyard Combo decks and Sweltering Suns against Creature Strategies. So we've got most bases covered. Facing Snow-Covered Plains, so it could be Human Tribal, in which case Sweltering Suns is decent. Never mind, looks like a Black-White Angels deck. Okay. So hopefully we can still cast our Sweltering Suns before their creatures get too large. Although Angels often get too for toughness as we see a Soul Warden instead. Happy enough cracking the Relic. And then Sweltering Suns lines up quite nicely here. Could have considered playing Beacon in case I draw a second one and want to play Novice Pyromancer to get an extra life next turn. Although Faceless Saving going to be pretty annoying as a way to pressure our Planeswalkers. So I might want to get the Bone Crusher in play first. Could also play Chandra's Regulator. Then loot away the second Regulator right now. With the plan of next turn using the Pyromancer, maybe adding a ton of mana. Copied with the Regulator's ability. Don't hate that idea. And then for now I get to keep up Stomp as well. So let's say the opponent just uses Haven again. Then next turn I could play Chandra, minus one copying with Regulator, and then cast a Bone Crusher to protect Chandra. Although that could of course go poorly if the opponent has removal. Right, Mobilized District's not bad either. Can trade for Haven. And Awaken Inferno is getting close to being cast as well. So yeah, I'm kind of liking the mana ability here. And then cast Bone Crusher, and then I could still use Regulator, discarding Sweltering Suns. Which I guess is reasonable given that the opponent hasn't presented any small creatures in the meantime. Alright, so we've got all the Chandras we need. Opponent hasn't done much the last few turns, E to Extinction is fine. So I'm tempted to wait on Awaken Inferno until I can use the plus two ability and copy it with a regulator to give the opponent two emblems as opposed to just one in case they have more planeswalker removal. And then for now I could Acolyte of Flame, nothing to really flash back. So I could either add loyalty or make a bunch of elementals, which also seems reasonable. So let's do that instead. And then I guess... I can also play the Mind Stone. Something like this. I guess I wouldn't be able to use the District, so maybe I'm better off keeping Mind Stone untapped in case I want to crank it. Although I'm probably just better off copying the Elemental ability. Sure. 
And then I can still leave Bone Crusher on defense if I'd like. Yeah, this looks good. And then next turn, I can awaken Inferno and copy the plus two ability with Regulator. And Rampage of the Valkyries is fine. Alrighty, so I think I'm still happy to play out a land here. Play Awakened Inferno. Won't be able to use Districts. I'm Chandra, the immolation sensation. Pay the one. And we'll copy the Elementals again, or we can add a ton of loyalty, which I also don't mind. And then could trade Bone Crusher for the Angel since it's our only creature. Opponent takes a four. So even if they send both Haven and the Angel at Awaken Inferno, it's not enough to take her out. So we'll get another chance to maybe give the opponent two emblems. We're at 14, so not really in danger of dying. And if I use Chandra's minus X ability, I would also exile the Angel so that doesn't trigger the Rampage of the Valkyries for what it's worth. It's going to be a youthful Valkyrie. And maybe a Faceless Haven activation. Fair enough. Both at Awaken Inferno. And Torch of Defiance the draw. That's a nice one. So let's say I play Torch of Defiance. Then I could use a loyalty ability on Chandra copy with Regulator. It's probably fine. Although can I just kill my opponents? Most likely. If I just copy the plus one here. That's Essentially four damage. Be easy. Oh, this and then can copy this. It's two more emblems. And then I'll probably just copy the elemental tokens for more damage. Could also attack with mobilized district. So I had a lot of options. But this seems good enough. Opponent's going to take at least two and then die to the emblems. GG's. Alright, so we got to see our Chandra's Regulator do its thing. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Fine hands, early light of the night as interaction, facing a ley line of sanctity. That could potentially mess with some of our abilities. Wouldn't be able to burn them out with a light of the night, that's for sure. At least Torch of Defiance says each opponent, so that gets around ley line. So some sort of blue-white enchantment's deck. All right, I'll keep up Stomp for now, which also wouldn't be able to target our opponents. And a rest in peace I don't really care about. Some probably fine casting Bone Crusher Giants. Since I want to start taking up Chandra. Although the emblem also won't be able to target the opponent with a ley line, so it's actually doing quite a bit of work for them. I imagine our opponent's playing Solemnity 9 lives, and I don't have a great answer for that combo. For now, I think I'll add mana and play Heart of Kiron. And then, even if they have a board wipe, we'll still have our vehicle to pressure them with. can cycle Sweltering Suns, so that's why it's 
my preferred choice over something like Anger of the Gods, which does have additional utility exiling creatures, but can be cycled in control matchups. Alright, so step one plus. That's two damage. We'll crew the heart. Could see something like Selder Vankage, I suppose, which would be unfortunate, but still gonna attack. Opponent takes eight. All right, so they're down to six. And then most likely gonna cycle Sweltering Suns. Could also proliferate with Karn's Bastion if I wanted to. I have a few options, maybe I should cycle now. In case I draw something useful, like a Regulator, all right. So that plus Torch of Defiance is four damage each turn. Opponent's just gonna make a one one. That's fine. So hopefully we can dodge a nine lives. SRAM instead, interesting. So is it more of an Auras deck than your typical enchantment deck? Looks like it. All right, so maybe I should have held on to a few more removal spells. Ether Tunnel to make it unblockable. Okay, so they can take out Torture Defiance now. That happens. But they still seem dead to Chandra with a Regulator, plus a Heart of Kiron. Alright, so pretty interesting deck from our opponents. But Chandra Tribal is gonna cross the finish line. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand has a lot of removal, no Chandras. I can always cycle Sweltering Suns, but we would really prefer to face a creature deck. I'll try it. Just takes one Chandra for her hand to become quite powerful. Sentinel sadly dodges a one mana Light of the Night, but at least opponent won't be casting a turn to Archdruid. It's gonna be a Warmaster into maybe another one drop. No. So we can take out Warmaster or we can wait on Sweltering Suns, which is also reasonable to just wipe up the entire board. And then now maybe go for Regulator over Heart of Kiron. And then Regulator can also help us loot away cards. Or I could just crack Relic of Progenitus to help me draw more cards, even though it's less mana efficient than Regulator. Because I do really want to find a Chandra. Can always intervene with Chandra's Triumph. If our opponent keeps up Collected Company, that would be slightly annoying, since that plays around Sweltering Sun somewhat. But our opponent taps out for another Elvish Warmaster into Clan Caller, so this Sweltering Suns is going to be devastating. I'll happily take three damage. Cycle Relic. And wipe the board. Send our opponent back to the Stone Ages, and our opponent doesn't feel like playing anymore, understandably. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a decent hand. A relic into maybe a Mind Stone on two, so I can guarantee Acolyte of Flame. If I draw land, do I still play Mind Stone or do I want to play Heart of Kiron for a more aggressive start? I guess it's going to be Mind Stone. And then I could crack Relic of Progenitus just to draw a card, hopefully hit my land drops. Depends what deck or opponent's playing. If it's some sort of Phoenix deck, then Relic does have quite a bit of utility. But Hull, typically not a card you see in Arclight Phoenix decks, 
So it might just be a more blue rat control style deck. So I think I crack relic. And then could play regulator activates. Could play Acolyte of Flame. I do want to hit my land drop, so I think I regulator here. And then doesn't seem like a matchup where I'm gonna need sweltering suns. The land is good. And then we just wanna try and ramp towards Awaken Inferno. Right, it's gonna be an expressive iteration. Finding Temple of the Dragon Queen, so maybe more of a dragon stack. Names blue, revealing smoldering egg. That's fine. And our opponent had to discard to hand size. Mobilize district, a decent draw as well. So we can Acolyte of Flame plus Heart of Kiron, even though I don't get to use Regulator, but that's fine. And then probably just gonna add loyalty as opposed to deal two damage. But that's also a close call. The extra loyalty will come in handy for uh, turning Heart of Kiron into a creature. Alright, so we've got some threats in play now. A creature land, a vehicle, a planeswalker. Things that are pretty difficult for most removal spells to interact with. And there's a smoldering egg, which we can maybe remove with our light up the night. Ooh, Torch of Defiance. Awesome draw. So we can play Torch of Defiance. Use the plus to add mana. And copy that with Regulator. You and I are gonna take them out. To add four mana, basically. And then I could use Acolyte of Flame to add a ton of loyalty to Torture Defiance as well. Or I could light up the Knight taking out Smoldering Egg. I think I'll play it safe and take out the egg. So X equals three. And then I'll still add loyalty with our Acolyte of Flame. And that can also crew Heart of Kiron. And then next turn we could technically already emblem Torch of Defiance. Opponent's got a fading hope to bounce their own egg, that's fine. Now they won't be able to bounce Heart of Kiron. Opponent does get to scry one. And then Heart of Kiron having vigilance also means we can uh, potentially block like a hasty goldspan dragon if our opponent's playing that. So, yeah, good at applying pressure and protecting our Chandras while dodging sweepers and sorcery speed removal. So, five mana. Into another Smoldering Egg. Now, I will say our opponent's deck looks awfully a lot like a standard deck instead of a historic one. So, they may have queued up for the wrong ranked queue. Yeah, I think I want to emblem Torch of Defiance, so use the zero ability to put a loyalty on all my planeswalkers. And then I'll copy it with Regulator as opposed to playing Awaken Inferno. Could also proliferate with Karn's Bastion, so we have a lot of options. This way I'll get to keep my Torch of Defiance around, unless they respond right now. Dragons fire their own smoldering egg. Interesting. Might have been a misclick, but uh, I'll emblem and then why not copy the emblem? Sounds fun. So we've got two emblems and then pretty close to just killing my opponent here. If I light up the knight, 
I can remove 8 loyalty, dealing 8 damage, and then 2 emblem triggers, that should do it. And then we even have a Heart of Kiron, so maybe I'll just flash it back for 7 here. So, 7 damage to my opponents, removing 1 from here, 6 from here. And two Torch of Defiance triggers. Well, there was a lot of damage out of nowhere. Wasn't even sure myself that I had lethal, but uh, yeah, showing the power of Regulator with Torch of Defiance and even Light of the Night as a nice finisher. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. We've got a playable hand. Not the uh, fastest to interact with the opponent's creatures, perhaps, so an explosive draw from the opponent could still be problematic. But I've got a bit of Graveyard Hate, a Chandra, and a Regulator. Up against Snoop, so Goblins. Not a great matchup for the deck. Need to find some removal. So for now, could play Regulator, could crack a Relic, which doesn't really do much in the matchup otherwise. Yeah, my Torture Defiance is not going to be well protected, so I think my best bet is trying to dig towards a Sweltering Suns, pretty much. Bowden playing Snow Goblins. Haven a bit of a Nombo with Castle Embereth. So taking five already. Alright, Chandra's Triumph's a good one. So am I going to cast Smashing as a spell? Or do I just play it as a tap land here? Seems unlikely for me to cast it, since on 4 I'm likely playing Torture Defiance, and on 5, Heart of Fire. So I'll just play Tapped and Pass. And then most likely killing the Chieftain here. But I'll wait to see what else they do. Maybe they play Krenko which I can now kill the Chieftain, Krenko doesn't have haste, and then Torture Defiance can clean up Krenko. But uh, we see another Haven coming up, so they will be able to turn on the first one, which will in turn pressure my Planeswalkers as well. So for now, Torture Defiance killing Mob Boss seems like a necessary course of action. At least Heart of Fire can plus to kill Snoop, as there's a Herald's Horn on top. Another good grindy tool against control decks. Can also Acolyte of Flame replay Triumph from the graveyard if needed. If our opponent ever casts Muxus, we're gonna be in trouble. Opponent actually ignoring Torture Defiance here. Not sure what they're planning. Another Krenko. Seems ambitious to ignore my Planeswalker here, but uh, let's see. I can use Torch of Defiance to play Regulator, but then I still won't have the mana to double Heart of Fire's 2 damage. I could, however, play Acolyte of Flame, and then I could use that to replay Triumph, killing Krenko. And then use Chandra for mana, probably, as well, to play Regulator. Could also go for Mindstone. But Mindstone, I can tap the turn I play it, so I think this works out better. They could kill both my Planeswalkers. But next turn I can play Heart of Fire and copy its ability with Regulator. Horn into Battle Cry. But they won't be able to activate it, and now this Heart of Fire is looking great. Next time, you're toast. 
Alrighty. And then I can even keep up Chandra's Triumph to maybe kill a Faceless Haven. So let's see, five. Plus one on Regulator, kill both. And then, yeah, keep up Triumph so I won't be able to play Mindstone. I guess I could also copy the mana ability. Sure, why not? And then I can play Mindstone. Copy Chandra Heart of Fire's ability. And still have Chandra's Triumph up. Alright. Well, this could not have gone much better for me. Opponents not killing Torture Defiance, I think, coming back to bite them. We know they're drawing Smashing, so Horn doesn't get any value. And I'm kind of hoping for them to activate Haven. Sadly, it's going to just be Muxes instead, which I can kill with Chandra's Triumph, but I might have to kill a Haste enabling Goblin instead. Alright, Matron can get another Muxus. I guess we'll just wait here and see. Yeah, Putin gets a back of Muxus. And there's another Muxus on top of their deck, so... Not a great turn of events. It's a lot of copies to fight through here. So do I want to do anything with my Triumph? Killing Muxus feels pretty bad when the opponent has two more to cast. Yeah, let's take my draw step. Ooh, Awaken Inferno. Now that's a draw. So that can kill the opponent's entire board. And then we can still keep up Chandra's Triumph. That sounds good. So we'll add mana. Play this. Beacon also gaining me quite a bit of life in the process. If you heard of me, and then I want to minus three here. No need to copy it. I'll just deal two. To my opponent and to two Muxus, paying the one. And then how much is it to activate District? It's one mana. It would have Vigilance, so then I'll still have Triumph available, is that right? Yeah, that seems decent. So hit for three. And we still have a Triumph up. Hopefully that's enough to survive. And then I can start embleming Awakened Inferno. So just gotta hope they hit one or fewer haste enabling goblins. Alright, Battle Cry can give haste. So if I kill it now, they just activate in response. Um, in which case I might want to kill Muxus. So I'll just pass priority here. And then I might wait and see what else they do. Maybe they just try and cast another Muxus here. In which case I also want to hold Triumph. Alright, opponent goes for it again. And then... Probably let Muxus resolve, as opposed to killing Battlecry now. Although, if they hit more goblins, they can always use Prospector to use Battlecry's ability. But I might be better off just killing a different goblin. Alright, sadly, they hit the jackpot with Warchief and Krenko. So, probably gonna have to kill Warchief. Pre-combats. As her opponent gets a backup Krenko. So let's see here. I guess we'll let that resolve. 
And then if they try and cast another Crank Call, kill the War Chief in response. Although they can still use the Battle Cry Goblin's ability to give haste. So I'm most likely still dead. If the opponent knows how to use the Battle Cry Goblin. They should have floated to one mana for Prospector, so they didn't have to sack an extra goblin. Opponent moves to combat, so it looks like they missed the Battlecry Goblin interaction. And we get to untap, and yeah, I mean, I think we're good here since I can wipe the board once again. And uh, yeah, we're doing a decent job of surviving. So is there any way I can avoid using the minus three? I don't think so. I guess I could plus Chandra first, see what we hit, as I don't need it for mana. Could also crack Mindstone. Maybe start there. Alright, Novice Pyromancer, so let's plus copy the ability. Find another Awaken Inferno which I wouldn't be able to cast here, since I can't use the mana ability anymore, so... That's just 4 damage to the opponent's face. Then I'll probably use the minus 3. Could also activate my mobilized district first, but I'm probably gonna want to play a novice pyromancer, so... Let's minus 3. And then I could copy the ability so the other Chandra can go upstairs. Or I could have played Pyromancer to add mana and then take it from there. And the opponent explodes! So yeah, definitely a match we probably should have lost had our opponent played optimally, but I'll take it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. A little bit of interaction into Torch of Defiance. Probably fine to play one smashing tapped. Facing Fervent Champion, so a red aggro deck. So Beacon is going to be quite helpful. And we even drew a second. I'll hang on to Chandra's Triumph for now. Charger, okay. So one drop heavy deck. I mean... Could keep smashing around to deal with the smaller creatures and just take the one. Could also play Chandra, use the mana ability to play Chandra's Triumph on turn 4. Another Torture Defiance. So yeah, I could smashing X equals 1. Doesn't seem worth it as a 1 for 1. I'll just play Beacon and Pass. Alright, Annex, on the other hand, I do want to finish off with Chandra's Triumph. So probably fine to cast that now. Ooh, that's a perfect draw, Sweltering Suns. So can't Chandra into Sweltering Suns, but just wiping the board seems good enough. So opponent's down to three cards in hand, now four. And we're still at 15, about to gain a bit of life and put a Planeswalker in play, so... Don't hate my spot. Bone Crusher goes face. And... Wolf Chandra. And just deal two to the opponent seems fine. All right. Can deal with Bone Crusher quite easily. Let's just light up the knights, and then Chandra probably wants to keep plussing. Yep. You're going down. X equals two. And then I 
think I might play Smashing Tapped. But it's a close call. Since I could potentially reveal like a 6 mana Chandra I want to cast next turn. Still have double light up the night to protect our Planeswalker. And we drew all four Chandras here in the process. Alright, let's hope to dodge a haste creature. So we can emblem. Alright, Phoenix of Ash. It's gonna hit Torture Defiance for two most likely. Collide of Flame could add loyalty, but still not enough to emblem right now. Or it could replay her removal spell from the graveyard as well. But let's start by plussing. Alright, so I'm guessing Acolyte of Flame into replay removal spell is fine. And then maybe go for a light up the knights, keep triumph in the graveyards to maybe take out a larger creature. So her opponent could escape the Phoenix. It's gonna be Charger into an escape. Takes out Acolyte of Flame. So, probably plus first. And then I can still Light of the Night, killing Phoenix of Ash if I want. Or I could just minus three take out Phoenix. But I kind of want to see what we can find on top. Alright, Mobilize District, lands we cannot play. Alright, I guess light up the night, killing Phoenix. Removing three loyalty. Also kind of close to just burning my opponent out. I could cast this, deal seven to my opponents, and then Torture Defiance puts them to one. So it's not quite lethal. So I kind of like the kill Phoenix plan instead. Alright. Possible I should have just flashed back the Triumph with Acolyte of Flame to have access to a second Light of the Night. Was thinking maybe another Torbrand shows up and I'll need the extra damage from Triumph. But I guess Torture Defiance also deals for. Alright, claim the Firstborn to haste Bonecrusher to take out Chandra. Fair enough. Bastion for loyalty. So Torture Defiance can take out Bone Crusher. Won't be able to proliferate quite yet. So yeah, that leaves us in a bit of an awkward spot. Opponent can escape Phoenix of Ash again. But I just gotta hope to draw more action of the top, basically. Our Chandra plus one reveals weren't great so far. Could also play another Chandra, but it's still likely gonna die to the Phoenix plus Charger. So I think we'll wait. Right, Frostbite cleans up Chandra instead. And Phoenix comes back. Alright, Bone Crusher is a great draw. So 
I might want to stomp Charger first. Although, let's see, Escape is only three author cards, so they will be able to escape the Phoenix once again. So maybe I just stomp Charger, play Bone Crusher this turn. And then next turn maybe just keep plussing Chandra. Could also stomp their face. But the Charger can jump Bone Crusher, so... Let's try this. I'm not dead to an Amber Cleave, which could be a concern. Alright, Torbrand's not bad. Another Bone Crusher. So if Bone Crusher connects, then Bone Crusher plus Chandra can finish them off. So let's see if they block. Opponent does. In which case, I guess we're looking at Chandra kill Phoenix of Ash. And then they can escape it again. Could also Chandra plus for mana, stomp my opponent's face, play Bone Crusher, which would leave Chandra at 5 loyalty. They can just pump Phoenix to kill it. So, tough choice. I think I'm liking kill Phoenix and then perhaps just cast Bone Crusher Giants. And then we're just one good top deck away from hopefully closing out the game. Yeah, the Phoenix of Ash put in a lot of work. Would have loved to draw a Relic of Progenitus at some point. Opponent stays back with Phoenix and that's not going to end well for them, especially now that Awaken Inferno can exile it for good. So, we'll plus. Let's see, do I want to use the mana ability for some reason? Six. Still wouldn't let me use Karn's Bastion. There's a relic. I guess I could just deal two to my opponent instead. Now that Chandra can exile Phoenix. And yeah, the beacon has potentially kept me alive this game. Opponent's at two. And can't imagine the opponent killing me here. Unless they've got a second right, which... I guess this happened to me before this week. Double robber. So... They have to kill Torch of Defiance. But... Yeah, between a rock and a hard place here. Alright, sweet. So we got to see our Chandra tribal deck in action. And also faced a nice variety of matchups along the way. Definitely did not expect to go undefeated, although to be fair it's not like we faced too many high tier decks along the way. We did face elves and then goblins, although that one wasn't necessarily played optimally and I think we should have lost. But yeah, I'll take the wins where I can get them. And overall Chandra Tribal is a blast to play if you're into casting planeswalkers and burn spells. And I think the new additions make it even better than before. And then of course looking forward to Crimson Vow, there will also be a new Chandra, Chandra Dressed to Kill, which I'm sure we can slot in one or two copies in the deck as well, as a way to ramp into our powerful planeswalkers and provide card advantage. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.